In the New Testament, we read five times about complete joy. Each time, the same word is used in the original text, but each time in a different context. Today, we want to reflect briefly on these five biblical passages and how we still can enjoy this complete joy in our days. We will first read John 15, verse 10 and 11. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Love and joy are the two great characteristics of the Christian company. This joy is not to be compared with the normal earthly joy we feel in good times. No, this joy is the joy of Christ which is independent of circumstances and comes from communion with the Father. The Lord wants to give this joy to us as well. When all joy in this world passes away, no one can take this joy from us. In these two verses, complete joy is related to obedience. When we enjoy the love of the Lord Jesus, we are willing to do the Lord's commandments. We place ourselves completely under His will. This is only possible if we intensively occupy ourselves with the thoughts of the Lord and remain in Him, so to speak. From fellowship with Him, we also get strength, strength that enables us to be obedient out of love. This obedience leads to joy. Many people, also believers, associate obedience to the Lord's thoughts with having increased obligations, and they feel deprived of joy and freedom. But it's quite the opposite. This joy makes us truly happy and fills us more and more when we are obedient. The wonderful blessing of complete joy can be experienced by the one who is obedient. We find a second passage in John 16, verse 23 and 24. And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Here, this complete joy is related to prayer. The Lord Jesus speaks to the disciples about the new access to the Father through Him. Just like the disciples, believers today have direct access to God as our Father. Until then, the disciples did not live in the consciousness of children before God their Father. This would only happen after the resurrection and after receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, we have direct access to the Father as his children and may humbly ask him directly for anything, but in the name of the Lord Jesus. So it should be in accordance with the Lord's thoughts as if the Lord himself is saying the prayer. We must ask ourselves what the contents of our prayers are. Are they selfish requests or are they requests in the name of the Lord Jesus? For all requests in the name of the Lord, we have the promise that we will receive them. This promise, as well as receive prayer requests, fill our hearts with deep joy. The third Bible passage is in John 17, verse 12 and 13. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. In these verses, complete joy is related to the Father's protection. The Lord Jesus asks his Father to keep the disciples in his name. During the time when the Lord Jesus was here on earth, the Lord had preserved the disciples and protected them from the power of the enemy. Now the Lord would go to heaven again and he asked for preservation for the disciples. 
The protection by the father will not change, only the method changes. We stand in the Father's perfect preservation today just as the disciples did then. When we are sure of his protection, our hearts are also filled with joy. Every fear, doubt and worry clouds this joy. We can experience the great preservation and care of the Father every day. Because he knows what we need before we ask him. We live with this wonderful awareness. And this awareness leads to complete joy. The fourth Bible passage is in 1 John 1, verse 3 and 4. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also might have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. Here we find the joy associated with fellowship with the Father and His Son. The new life within us, the eternal life, enables us to have fellowship with God directly. We have fellowship with the Father by rejoicing in His Son. When we find our delight in the Lord Jesus, we have the same thoughts as the Father Himself. Just as the Father rejoices in what He sees in His Son, so we might rejoice. And in the same way, we have fellowship with the Son in the knowledge of the Father. What causes us to rejoice in the Father is the same as what caused the Lord Jesus rejoicing in the Father. We share the thoughts of the Father about the Son and the Son about the Father. And this is what fills our heart with joy. Unfortunately, this joy is often clouded here on earth by various things. But then we can enjoy the fellowship with the Father and the Son to refresh our joy. The fifth and last Bible passage is in 2 John 12. Having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink. But I hope to come to you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. In this last passage we have the complete joy related to fellowship with one another. John writes to the recipient of his letter that he hopes to see and speak with her soon. It is the bond of Christ's love that binds individual believers together. True friendship and joy can only be based on a common foundation, the truth about Christ. It is wonderful that we can still enjoy fellowship with other believers today. It is so necessary to strengthen, encourage and comfort one another. As much as we encourage one another, we must also be prepared to correct and admonish one another when necessary. All this leads to great joy in our hearts and especially as we share something about the Lord Jesus. Do we have this complete joy in our hearts?